Since the decree of Pope Clement XII in 1738, Catholics have been forbidden to join the Masons and until 1983, under pain of excommunication. Scanning official documents, the Church has condemned Freemasonry and other secret societies at least 53 times since 1738, and has specifically repeated the condemnation of Freemasonry 21 times. Pope Leo XIII called Freemasonry an enemy of God, Church, and country. In his encyclical Custodi di Quella Fede on Freemasonry in 1892, in 1917, St. Maximilian Kolb personally witnessed Freemasons celebrate their bicentennial in St. Peter's Square. Boldly, they marched right up to the doors of St. Peter's, displaying their banners which read, Satan must reign in the Vatican. The Pope will be his slave. In the past, Freemasons have called for the fall of women and the rise of immodesty and dress as a strategy to further corrupt the Catholic Church. The Alta Vendita was a document originally published in Italian by Italian Carbonari Freemasons that articulated the infiltration plan of the Catholic Church. Pope Pius IX and Pope Leo XIII both heartily gave permission for these documents to be published. In this document, the Freemasons write, Let us then never cease to corrupt. Tertullian was right in saying that the blood of martyrs was the seed of Christians. It is corruption in mass that we have undertaken, the corruption of the people by the clergy and the corruption of the clergy by ourselves. In order to destroy Catholicism, it is necessary to commence by suppressing woman, the words are true in a sense. But since we cannot suppress woman, let us corrupt her with the church. The corruption of the best is the worst of all. The following is a resolution taken during a Masonic Congress held in Switzerland in 1928. Religion does not fear the dagger's point, but it can vanish under corruption. Let us not grow tired of corruption. We may use a pretext such as sport, hygiene, health resorts. It is necessary to corrupt that our boys and girls practice nudism in dress. To avoid too much reaction, one would have to progress in a methodical manner. First undress up to the elbow, then up to the knees, then arms and legs completely uncovered. Later, the upper part of the chest, the shoulders, etc., etc. Then everything else, eventually, people will walk around naked or almost naked without batting an eye. And when modesty is removed, the sense of the sacred will be extinguished. Morality will weaken and faith will die of suffocation. Remember San Jacinto Marto's words in 1917, echoing Our Lady's warnings at Fatima, the sins that bring most souls to hell are the sins of the flesh. Certain fashions are going to be introduced that will offend our Lord very much. Do not give yourselves to a modest clothe. The Bishop of Limerick, Dennis Hallinan, writes in a letter to the press, I have seen it stated on what I conceive to be reliable authority that the principal designers of these modern fashions in women's dress are men not women, and furthermore that they are generally Parisian Jews or Freemasons who are bitterly opposed to Christianity and seek, among other means, to uproot it by the introduction into Christian society of these dangerous and indecent dresses. Pope Pius XI repeats this same warning in 1930 in his encyclical Ad Salutum, where he states that Christian women can never be at too great pains to abolish immodest fashions of dress. In contrast to the Freemasons' obsession with corruption and in support of the Church's view on purity and modesty, the great Catholic philosopher Alice von Hildebrand writes, the French have a wonderful word to capture the veiling of one's intimate feelings out of a proper sense of a shame, pudor, holy bashfulness, so to speak. In the same vein, Pope Pius XII explained in his allocution to the women of Catholic action in 1941, that impulse of shame, which in its spontaneous modesty is the gentle brother of religious sentiment, is not generally respected today, but you must take care to prevent its loss through erroneous fashions in dress and clothing, which are common but not sufficiently decorous, and you must make it, on the other hand, more delicate and vigilant, more sincere and genuine. 
Pope Pius XI went even further in 1935, stating that modesty and shame are two protectors of chastity. The use of a cult of nudity is a blasphemy. There is so much more to be said on this topic, so if you are interested in learning more, check out our book on Catholic modesty, which is linked down below. If you like the video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share with your friends. God bless you.